They're poo. <laughs> Pooh's excited too. Yeah. So we have uh, Chris versus Chris here. We have Chris Croy versus Chris Oyola, and both are playing Steel Song. Chris is playing a pretty normal version of Steel Song, it being a bit more of a mid range list, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of stuff we normally see, but Chris Oyola is playing something very spicy. Uh, in the deck list, I saw a couple golden harps, which. Uh, if you add their one fours with two lore, if you don't play a song at the end of the turn, they get banished. Then we're also playing some Pratitas in there as well. So I'm eager to see if we uh, ever see those golden, har golden harps being playing. But we're starting very quickly, Chris playing out a Cinderella ballroom sensation, and then Chris Croy playing out the Ursula as well. Yeah, Ursula, this Vanessa version, is a card that popped up in this latest set. Um, it's a fun card because it allows you to play it on turn two, and then it unlocks several different songs on turn three, including Let the Storm Rage On, Strength of Raging Fire, um, and then also Along Came Zeus. Yes, yeah, so that's one thing that uh, I think is going to be kind of interesting in this matchup. Oyola's deck list, they are playing uh, Cinderella's. Chris Croy is not. There's actually no Cinderella's in the list whatsoever. Oyola's also playing the Shift um, Cinderella as well, and so... I think that these removal cards in Steel, especially being in a Steel Mirror match, end up being really important. I feel like the players that get the most value out of these songs, and we see Oyola singing uh, Let the Storm Rage On with Cinderella to deal two damage to Ursula, drawing an extra card, playing a Smee. Whoever can get the most value out of these songs might end up being the victor. No, that's right. And that's what these Steel Songs deck really do. We're used to thinking of resource accumulation as accumulating ink in your inkwell. Well, these decks accumulate resources by getting uh, strong singers on the board that can sing uh, powerful songs, so enabling them to do many inks worth of things um, in one turn, and they're not just limited to their inkwell. And speaking of songs, we do see an Ariel Spectacular Singer being played, and uh, look at these songs. Aren't they neat? There's three of them in uh, Croy's hand right now. We have an Along Came Zeus, World's Greatest Criminal Mind, and a Let the Storm Rage On. There's actually three World's Greatest Criminal Mind in Croy's deck list, which I think may end up playing a role here because of those Cinderella Stouthearteds, if we ever see them being played by Oyola. And it's just extra removal. Croy's not actually playing any Strength of Raging Fire, which is kind of an interesting uh, thing to do. It, it's, a, it's a removal card that we see very normally in the Steel Song decks because the goal of these decks is typically to play out your hand as wide as you can and then sing Whole New World, refill your hand so that you're ready to go the next turn. Um, and it looks like we are resolving this. Along came Zeus with the Ursula singing it. Ursula being a singer for to banish the Smee before Oyola is o able to get any lore out of Mr. Smee. Yeah, it's a really, really, the whole new worlds are a fascinating card to consider in this deck because, or in this matchup, it's a card that, that each deck wants to play as part of their strategy, but they also know that their opponent also wants to play that card. So I think what this becomes a game of is board control with each person trying to control the other singers because the first person who can get a significant board of singers, uh, a significant advantage in singers, and then is able to sing the whole new world and play cards immediately afterwards with those resources at their disposal definitely gets an edge. And this definitely puts Chris Croy on that edge, being the person who was able to go first, being the highest seed, being the first play seed after yesterday's uh, day one. And But... As long as this Ariel stays in play, then Croy should be able to sing A Whole New World if he has it. If not, I did see A Whole New World in, Oyo in Oyola's hand in which this Ariel could sing as well. And as you mentioned, I think whoever gets these off first gets the most value, forcing your opponent to dump their hand, draw new cards that you can play because you're not paying for that song. They're going to gain a lot of advantage there. Yeah, absolutely. So here we see the Robin Hood come into play, not terribly strong on its own, but it is a shift target for Floodborne Robin Hood, and we see uh, Chris taking advantage of the shift to play that five-cost Robin Hood for four using the shift target. Yes, I love this play. It... Uh Robin Hood normally costs five, the Floodborne one does, but if you have the two cards of the one cost and the five cost, it's only a shift three, so you can get it out a turn earlier by just playing the four ink to shift it. And we do see Croy singing A Whole New World with Ariel, refilling his hand and forcing Iola to discard and drawing four cards as well. Or sorry, seven cards. Yeah, so we'll see how Chris responds here. I'm trying to get a look at what he drew into. We see a Storm Rage on, a Rapunzel Cinderella, Interestingly enough, um, Oyola is not playing, well, he's only playing two along came Zeus. And I feel like Robin Hood is an especially strong card in this matchup because of the six willpower. These steel removal actions are damage based. And so most of them, you're dealing a certain number of damage. We see the two damage on the Storm Rage on, the five damage from along came Zeus. It can be really difficult to remove a card like 
Robin Hood, because of that extra willpower, normally requiring multiple resources from the steel players. No, you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that this game is about using your resources effectively. So having to use two cards to take care of Robin Hood um, is puts Chris at a little bit of a disadvantage. And, and the Robin Hood represents uh, a bit of a threat here, too. It's a card that can gain two lore when it banishes a character in a challenge. And a lot of Chris's singers, a lot of his cards in this deck, in fact, are, have a little bit lower willpower. And so both of the cards on the board are threatened by that Robin Hood, meaning that Chris can't use them to sing without uh, dealing with the dealing with the Robin Hood during this turn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's an especially important card in this matchup for the reasons you just said. Like, both of these players want to be singing with their characters, which means they are exerting them. We see Oyola singing Let the Storm Rage On with Cinderella, dealing two damage to Robin Hood. And if the Robin Hood does not, if the Robin Hood is not banished this turn, then it will be able to challenge in these characters that are exerting themselves and singing. And so Robin Hood being able to progress Croy's win condition by challenging um, Oyola's board, removing those characters, and gaining two lore ca is a serious problem. Yeah, so interesting choice here. We sing a whole new... I'm uh, sorry, let the Storm Rage on to deal two damage to the Robin Hood, most likely to get Chris another card. Um, and I was going to say that leaves some damage there for <laughs> exploitation from a, from a Rapunzel, but no, uh, let the Storm Rage on, which deals one damage to a character for each character that you have in play. In this case, it's five. So we talked about how it would require a two for one, but I will say two cards for one feels a little bit better when one of those cards nets you a card, as a Storm Rage on does. Absolutely, and we talked about this earlier with how powerful strength of a raging fire can be in this deck and what it's trying to do throwing your cards onto the table seeing a whole new world when you can get a bunch of characters in play you're dealing a ton of damage with the strength of a raging fire but chris Corey responds with a grab your sword on his own which doesn't board white but gets rid of the majority of cards on iola's side of the board yeah, now this, what an interesting back and forth here with removal action after removal action, dealing damage and trying to control their opponent's singers. Um, if we see another whole new world, we'll probably see this continue. There we have the Rapunzel, which will heal Smee for two, uh, enabling Chris to draw two cards off that heal. A very strong card. One of the most popular cards in set one. Yeah, there's this interesting thing where Rapunzel is healing what has been hurt. The Smee is, is uh, exerting himself dealing damage to himself. Uh, in this case, it was actually from the Grab Your Sword, I believe, but being able to draw extra cards off of the Rapunzel, both players are playing this Rapunzel and a whole new world deck. So sometimes you decide to draw cards with your Rapunzel and not disrupt your opponent's hand. For instance, if your opponent doesn't have very many cards in hand, maybe you don't want to give them seven extra cards. You have Rapunzel there to give yourself card draw only. We do see Chris Croy playing an aerial spectacular singer again. Looking at the top four cards, we only see a whole new world in there. Uh, a couple other cards going to the bottom of the deck. And I don't think Croy can sing whole new world this turn, but Oyola at least knows that it's coming. Yeah, so let's talk about Sleepy's Flute for a minute. Because we haven't seen one in the game yet, except for one that Chris was just forced yes. to send to the bottom of his deck. Um, there's really two ways I think that this game goes. Uh, one is if I think some of the, the big threats uh, that we talked about, in particular, uh, the Cinderella is able to stick around for a while and gain three lore per turn. You also have the Robin Hoods, which could gain two lore per turn if they're able to stay on the board for a while. The other is whichever player manages to get, you know, perhaps two flutes in play first and is able to gain two lore a turn off these songs they have in their deck um, might have the edge, and neither player has been able to put one on the board yet. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because Sleepy's Flutes have been sort of a staple in these Steel Song decks. We have seen we saw Sleepy's Flutes and Pride Lands being played earlier in the meta in a version of Steel Song, but Oyola's actually not playing any Sleepy's Flutes in his deck, also not playing any item removal. So if Croy's able to get a couple of these Sleepy's Flutes down and can start seeing these songs doing what Steel Song wants to do by gaining value, uh, keeping board control through these songs, then Croy could start to run away with the game. But like you said, we found one of them and unfortunately had to go to the bottom of the deck because of the Aerial Spectacular Singer. Mm, fantastic. So no flutes in Aeola's deck. No flutes. That's right. Yeah, it's very interesting. I love Oyola's deck. There's a lot of interesting stuff there between the Golden Harps, the Perditas, the Cinderella Stout Hearted. We haven't seen much of it yet. There's also a Pooh. Uh, P Piglet, Pooh Pirate Captain, <laughs> <laughs> that went into the Inkwell. Um, so two very different decks here. I feel like Oyola's is geared a little bit more towards the aggressive side, trying to get some low-cost, high lore characters down, while Croy's is a bit more mid-range. Croy's playing characters like Tinkerbell Giant Fairy, playing a couple more copies of Grab Your Sword than Oyola is, and Croy being able to go first, that might make the difference in this game, just having the opportunity to respond a little bit earlier to what Oil is doing. And typically, Steel, especially uh, Amber Steel and Steel Songs, has been 
favored into more aggressive decks, or at least lower to the ground decks. It does look like uh, Chris is challenging the Ursula with the Robin Hood to put one damage on the Robin Hood, then play a Rapunzel, healing that one damage and drawing a card. So we, we did talk about you know effective uh, high statted characters for questing. These Rapunzels, uh, they do have a great effect when they come into play, like healing a character and allowing you to draw you know, up to three cards. But then they are two lore questers with five willpower, which does take uh, oftentimes some resources to deal with. And Chris, without much strength on the board, is going to have to devote resources to, to, to deal with these. Otherwise, Chris will be questing for four a turn with just the Rapunzels. Yeah, and like we mentioned earlier, most of the removal in steel is damage-based. So when you have characters with high willpower, unless you're using something like an Along Came Zeus or a Strength of a Raging Fire, they can be pretty difficult to banish. Um, it looks like Oyola previously removed one of the aerials with a Strength of a Raging Fire, uh, and then we see another Rapunzel being played. Ariel challenging into the Robin Hood. And we did see, I think, the first Sleepy's Flute drawn uh, that we may see here probably before those Whole New Worlds get played and send that Sleepy's Flute to the, to the discard pile. Yeah, Corey has an interesting hand here holding on to two Whole New Worlds, so unfortunately, if you spin one, one's going to go into the discard. And we do see a Baloo being played. Now, this is another difference between these decks, isn't it? Yes, Baloo is only in Corey's deck and is a card that I really enjoy. Uh, Baloo is an uninkable three cost zero three with bodyguard, but has a really interesting ability in that when you banish Baloo in any capacity, you gain two lore. So if you ignore the Baloo, he's going to quest for one lore every turn, because why wouldn't you? And then when you do eventually have to banish him, your opponent immediately gets two lore. He disrupts a little bit of what the opponent can do in regards to challenging your other characters. So in this instance, Baloo has to be challenged before the Ursula Vanessa or the Ariel Spectacular singer cam we do see an aerial spectacular singer being played by oyola i believe grabbing a bare necessities uh, as well yeah i mean blue is an interesting card as you highlighted it basically represents two lore and in a steel sign deck not only is it you know a bodyguard for your characters or questing for one lore but it also can sing for three like any three cost card can and there's a lot of options available so it's not a card that you like to see stick around it basically represents two lore when you play it on the board yeah and when we have this steel song mirror match too a lot of these characters have relatively low strength. If we look at Chris Oyola's board right now, he has two Rapunzels and then Ariel. That's only four strength total. I don't really feel like you want to spend two of your characters that you'd rather be questing with or singing with, challenging in a, into a blue just so that Croy doesn't get that value of either being able to sing with a blue or simply questing and pushing his uh, win con even further. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely discussion here. Yeah, you know, it's worth noting, again, both these players, we're, we're not on a clock here, and both of these players haven't qualified for the top four are going to take every opportunity to think through every single move to make sure that they don't misplay anything and they've thought through all the options before they, before they you know, finally decide on uh, what course of action they want to take. Chris Oyola deciding to sing Bare Necessities with Rapunzel, seeing both of those whole new worlds and the world's greatest criminal mind, opting to remove the world's greatest criminal mind for uh, reasons we understand. He has some larger characters in his deck, like the Cinderella Stouthearted. And then also an interesting card you can use with the Queen. If a Queen is out on board, you can boost an opposing character's strength high enough so that they would be banished by world's greatest criminal mind and uh, deciding that, look, there's whole new worlds in hand. If I get one of the whole new worlds out, that's not going to stop them from being able to sing the other. So That's the thing. Uh, whole new worlds do not get better as you accumulate them. They're pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Two is the same as one. <laughs> <laughs> You do find mm -hmm. a grab your swords from the top of the deck, though, which is an interesting thing because I think we've seen two, maybe three Rapunzels from, from Oyola, but we've talked about how important this high willpower is. If we do see the grab your swords being played, which we, uh, Corey does decide to do, you've now put damage on all of Oyola's characters, which opens him up to, if he has a Rapunzel, being able to gain more value out of that Rapunzel healing him or Julieta or any of the other characters or cards in the deck that allows you to draw cards from healing characters. Yeah, it does open that up, but it does it does do one thing, which is, uh, let's talk about Lawrence for a second. Lawrence is a card that gets uh, four strength when he has no damage on him, and it's one of the, it's the strongest character Chris has on the board, able to get over Baloo's willpower uh, on its own. And so putting that damage on it now prevents Baloo from being removed by Lawrence. And we do finally see the Sleepy's Flute being played, of course, can be exerted this turn and gaining a lore with the Grab Your Sword being played uh, for Croy's turn, passing it over to Oyola. I think the 
the choice of putting the damage on the Lawrence was very intentional here, even knowing that it was going to put damage on everything else for the reason you said. This Baloo is being very annoying, mm -hmm. to be honest. Just because of the reasons we mentioned earlier, I don't think you want to spend your turn using more than one of your characters to challenge and banish another character. And, of course, right now, Oyola would have to challenge with the Ariel and the Rapunzel unless there is a action or song in his hand that could banish it instead. Yeah, it definitely makes uh, the removal a lot less efficient. Let's see. But we do have the Rapunzel. So let's yes. see if it heals the Lawrence. And this is the line I think that you'd mentioned, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I was scared for for Croy. If if Oyola had the Rapunzel, could heal the, the, uh, the Lawrence, drawing two cards. Then now Lawrence has four strength. He's able to challenge the blue finally. And now we're able to make some trades into Croy's board, banishing the blue, also banishing the aerial that was exerted and had two damage with the other one of the other Rapunzels that are on board right now. There's a lot of golden hair yes, <laughs> on so the table much. right now. Yeah, and this is definitely, you know, this is kind of some of the math, the calculations that you make. You say, I've seen two already. You know, Chris has seen this many of his cards. I can't remember if we've seen a fourth that's been banished yet, but we've seen at least three. Um, kind of taking the gamble there that that uh, Rapunzel isn't in hand, and it turns out it was. Oyola trying to decide if he wants to quest with these characters, and it looks like he is going to quest up to five, getting a little bit closer to Croy, Croy having the lead. But, of course, Croy went first. It's a bit more of the mid-range deck. It sort of makes sense in this scenario. Now, I think Chris may have turned a corner here. Chris Croy still has plenty of options. Of course, A Whole New World is available. Um, cannot sing it, though, um, which is unfortunate for Chris. And I think that is a very important topic. I want to talk about, again, this matchup. You mentioned it earlier. Both players want to remove the opposing player's characters that they can sing with because the value that this deck generates is from being able to sing those expensive cards and sometimes the not expensive cards but we're looking at the whole new worlds in the hand i'm sure croy would like to sing these once he can lower his hand refill the hand and then of course with the sleepy flutes you're trying to play a song every turn so oyola knowing that he needed to get rid of the aerial last turn so that Croy couldn't sing whole new world because it's the only five cost singer we're seeing how that disrupts croy's game plan right now Yes, and so we just had uh, another Rapunzel come down. I think we've seen, I mean, we've seen at least six. <laughs> there so are so many. Um, but that was a, a crucial draw, drawing three cards. And then we saw a couple cards that are really important. One is the second Sleepy's Flute. You know, most of these decks run about 18 songs. Uh, I've talked to some Steel Song players, and they say around 18 to 20. Uh, Frank Karsten, who won uh, Leal, uh, said 18 songs was his sweet spot. And so you can expect you'll see a song of, about every turn, and that's what these decks are designed to do. So with two flutes on the board, that really starts a clock uh, to the end game here. Yeah, we're in a really interesting position right now because Oyola is presenting two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve lore on board currently on currently just with what's there. But the majority of these characters, again, having a lot of willpower. There is a Tinkerbell Giant Fury and a Grab Your Sword in Croy's hand, so could do three damage total if there is the ink. I'm not sure that there is available to him. We're gonna start with a Grab Your Sword dealing two damage to everything, and it doesn't look like we're gonna have enough to sing or sorry, to play the giant Tinkerbell, but we're at least gonna do as much damage as we can to as many of the characters as we can, and then I'm sure Corey's going to have to challenge into this Lawrence and Rapunzel's to banish them and slow Oyola down just a little bit, because I feel like Croy, if he can gain control back and then start finding songs, we know there's some whole new worlds in his hand, which means he's much more likely to find some in the next couple turns. He's gaining two lore a turn off of these Sleepy's Flutes for every song that he plays, so if he can keep up this pressure on Oyola, stop his characters from questing too much, then he may be able to come back from this slightly behind position. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. We're seeing Chris do Chris Croy. We have to specify every time. <laughs> we have Chris with a K doing that exact thing, making some trades here, trying to keep some of those high lore characters from questing again. Let's see how we trade this out. Okay, so we'll get rid of the Rapunzel there and then quest into Lawrence, who now has no strength due to the damage. And let's talk about Perdita for a second, uh, Brandon. This, uh, I think, is one of the key cards that uh, Chris Ayola wants in the endgame here. This is a card we saw used very effectively in the finals yes. of Atlanta. <laughs> I'll um, never forget. I feel like people sleep on Perdita a little bit, but this is twice now that we've seen this uh, beautiful uh, dog in the at least top decks of the game. Perdita is an unequal six cost card that when you play her, you can get a card that costs 
a character card that costs one or two back and play it immediately. So it's really good for just bringing characters back that you may want to shift on to. For instance, we see Oyola playing the Robin Hood that went back into the deck. There's also a couple other one drops in Oyola's deck that you may want to grab back or two drops like a Mr. Smee. Just things that quest for a lot of lore. Yeah, and So here we see both of Chris Aeola's two Perditas online, or on the board. Um, he can use those again to get two characters back from the discard pile each turn, allowing him to go wide faster. And what's interesting about Perdita is that it's on play and when you quest. And this is just another example of a character that has a ton of willpower. And uh, in this mirror match, these characters not having a lot of strength means that Oyola is likely to get a lot of value out of it. But we see a third Sleepy's Flute being played from Chris Croy. And it looks like... Uh, we have the handshake. I think Chris Ayola had it. Uh, I don't, I think Chris, I'm sorry, Chris Corey managed to get that flute on the board, but it yes. looks like he didn't have enough to take care of all the lore that Chris Ayola was representing on that side of the board. And so, uh, Chris. Did he have enough to quest, though? I was counting up the, the characters to see if Chris Croy could quest, found the third Sleepy's flute, I think could have gotten up to 17 lore, and then used the Sleepy's flutes to quest to victory. You know, <laughs> all right, it looks like both players, uh, I think, is finishing their altering step. Yeah, I'd love to see how many each one's sending back. I think we're past that, though. Let's see. I am excited to see some of these cards in Oyola's hand. I feel like we didn't get to see exactly, get to see his deck work exactly the way it wants to sometimes. We see that. Poo, uh, sorry, I keep calling Piglet Poo. It's, it's in the title. <laughs> the Piglet Poo Pirate Captain. It is going to go into the inkwell, but uh, I feel like Oyola's deck wants to come out pretty explosive. He has a lower curve than Croy does and has cards like Perdita to be pretty aggressive in his questing, not care too much about whether his lower cost characters get banished because he can just bring them right back. So I'm eager to see if Oil is able to create an explosive opening in this game going first. Yeah, it's definitely designed to work faster than Chris's deck. Than Chris Croy's deck. <laughs> <laughs> so here we chat have... Chat knows who we're talking about. Chat, chat knows. Um, you know, one of the, the lines that I really love in these Steel Song decks, uh, and we'll talk about why it's weird in the mirror here, is the second turn whole new world. Uh, and that's because of the... The altering your hand mechanic in this game allows you to find the cards that you want for your opening you know, first three or four turns. And so oftentimes players have set up their first few turns and, and have a good game plan. Um, and when you're able to play Queen, uh, Regal Monarch here, or, and then shift it into Queen Commanding Presence, a five cost card on turn two, it opens up playing a whole new world immediately. Um, and so here we see one part of that combo. And instead Ooh. of singing the whole new world, it's a long came Zeus to remove that Robin Hood shift target. Um, it throws your opponent off their game plan. Of course, in a deck that wants to play a whole new world like Chris Aeolas, they may have the same plan, so the calculation changes a little bit. Yeah, I want to point that out because it might look interesting to the viewers why the why Croy would choose to banish the one drop Robin Hood instead of the Ursula, which has much more willpower. But it's for that same reason. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you don't have the Queen shift line, you do have a Robin Hood shift line on turn three where you can do the same thing and sing a whole new world. I know Oyola does have a whole new world in hand. I'm not sure if he has the Floodborne Robin Hood or not, but this is a way for Croy to play around that shift whole new world play by the Robin Hood. No, that's exactly right. It's one of the things that makes Lorcana really interesting and a little bit difficult sometimes is when your opponent has a shift target in play, you always have to consider that that's an option. And so sometimes innocuous cards represent bigger threats. And we even see Oyola respecting Croy's queen here by hard playing Let the Storm Rage On, paying for the three ink to deal two damage to the queen and then banishing his own Ursula by challenging it into the queen, knowing that the queen's a five cost character. So as long as the queen is around, that opens opens up Croy to sing pretty much any song that he wants to. Mm. So now with the Spectacular Singer taking a look at the top five cards, we have two options available. One is Along Came Zeus, the other is Let the Storm Rage On, and we're si selecting the Along Came Zeus. We're going to see Oyola draw for the turn. Are we looking to ink and play? We're going to ink a Cinderella and then playing two a double Smees. Smee. It's a pretty aggressive play. I mean, Smee has great stats. It's a 3-3 three, three for a two-drop character, also having two lore, so representing a lot of lore on board right now. And then knowing that we have cards like Rapunzel that we can play to heal the Smee if it's getting away with some quests and dealing damage to itself could be a pretty uh, explosive 
played here. That's true. And they've threatened the aerial spectacular singers if they become exerted. So we have another spectacular singer into a whole new world. Deciding not to take the world's greatest criminal mind. Putting that at the bottom of the deck. Could sing whole new world this turn if we wanted to with the other aerial. But instead we're going to sing the Along Came Zeus, banishing one of the Mr. Smees. I don't think Corey's inked for the turn, so we're going to ink the queen and then pass. Yeah, a, a whole new world at this point with what he has in hand starts to become pretty tempting. I do wonder, uh, Brandon, is he tempted to put that uh, Sleepy's Flute into play before, exactly, discarding, er, that's, before whole new world? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Looking at his hand, we have the Sleepy's Flute. You don't really want to put that into your discard because there's not a way to get it back, and it's part of Corey's game, game plan. We saw how much work the Sleepy's Flutes did. Exactly having three on the last game was able to get him to 20. The turn before Oyola was going to be able to win, so I imagine Chris Corey's hoping that this aerial sticks around so that this turn we can play the Sleepy's Flute, sing A Whole New World, and then maybe even play a couple more characters. There's yeah. also a blue that he has in hand that you could use to protect the aerial singer on the next turn, knowing that we're trying to play A Whole New World this turn. So here's the two. We'll see if we see the blue. We do. And do we sing The Whole New World now? Interesting we don't put in the blue exerted. Yeah, that is a great point. Uh, okay. So we are going to exert it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> And we do sing the whole new world. Uh, so there it is. Uh, it's exactly the line you suggested. So that is interesting because we do get rid of an aerial spectacular singer and a whole new world for Oyola. And the whole new world is, it's, it's good to get rid of for Oyola, but I think even bigger is the aerial spectacular singer. A lot of times in these mirror matches, whoever plays the most aerials and gets most value out of them can end up winning. It's a little bit of a, of a, of a, competition between that and Rapunzel because Rapunzel's can also add a ton of value as well but even just getting rid of that one aerial I'm sure Corey's happy to see. Yeah a card that replaces itself is always good. A card that replaces itself with perhaps allowing you to, to pick the tool that you need in that particular moment is very good. So Oyola is starting his turn with a fresh hand of seven cards. I did see a Cinderella Stout Hearted a little bit too early to play that couple removal songs like let the storm rage on Let's see we do see the harp wow he's going through very quickly <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see so the harp is a viable play here uh at this point uh so chris kind of with the option to go wide we're going to remove the blue with the smee makes sense croy will gain two lore off of the blue being banished we're going to deal one damage to the aerial, and then two damage to the Rapunzel after challenging it. Then we are going to finish banishing the aerial by playing a Let the Storm Range on with our ink, and then allowing Oil to draw a card off of that as well. And this is this back and forth that we saw last game with each player trying to get characters to stay on the board, trying to build up a board state, and just going back and forth with removal actions. We're going to see a Golden Heart being inked so that we can play a Cinderella and an aerial, just setting up some more of those singers. Both of these cards are singers and can sing for twice as much, or sorry, not twice as much, two more ink than they cost. A lot of those three-cost songs, four-cost songs, like Along Came Zeus, The Storm Rage On, Strength of a Raging Fire, Chris Oil is slowly building up his board, and it very quickly being taken down. Yes, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, Chris is kind of making a bet here, hoping that we don't have the wide removal, grab your swords, is available. Although, you know, it does feel good for Chris Corey to get uh, that number of characters off the board. Uh, but at the same time, Chris is forced to spend his entire turn uh, playing that card with ink, sending it back over to Chris uh, here in a moment with two characters on the board and allowing him to respond and rebuild. And I think this is where both of these players are looking to gain an advantage because we can see just how slow of a turn it is for Koi to have to pay five ink and play this card versus being able to play a card like Grab Your Sword for free and then refill his board with characters because he essentially spent that entire last turn just playing the song, uh, exerting the Sleepy's Flute, and now Iola gets a whole nother turn to respond after that. And although some of his characters were banished, he has a lot of ink to work with. He still has some singers on board if there's anything he wants to do. We see a Perdita being played, pulling back that Cinderella that was just banished and playing it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Chris definitely wants to go wide here at this point with the Perdita, as, as he's indicating he wants to do. Um, Chris, however, has another option to deal with the wide board. He does have Tinkerbell in hand, which will deal one damage across the board. Not enough to remove anything at this point, but definitely threatening then two for ones on the following turn. 
Yeah, and this is such an interesting thing about this matchup is that you have cards like Grabber Sword, you have cards like Tinkerbell, which are typically used to remove these wide boards, but with all of the willpower on all these characters, if you're just adding damage to these characters, you're opening yourself up to a line we saw in last game, where if Chris Oil is holding on to a Rapunzel, you can create a huge advantage by completely healing a character that was almost at banishment. That is true. And that's, you know, the fun thing about TCGs is sometimes, you know, you, you always play around your opponent's options and you're considering what they might play. And obviously, sometimes you're playing around their most dangerous card consistently. But sometimes you just have to take a gamble, say, if you've got it, you've got it. If you don't, you don't. And uh, try, to, try to win the game. We're also in a really interesting position where uh, Oyola has been able to build a pretty wide board, and every time that Croy's characters are banished, he's having to find more characters to play. And he's working with, I think, seven ink right now, but that doesn't lend him to play too many ver very strong characters. We see the Robin Hood being played, which is one of the stronger characters I think he could play currently, but then he can only follow that up with another two-cost character, which we see as the Ursula, while Oyola still has a giant board worth of characters that can quest for a lot and is also just going to be difficult to banish. Yeah. This does put Oyola in a weird spot where if he can't heal any of his banished characters, you don't really want to sing or exert them because of this Robin Hood that's in play as well. That is true. You know, and we'll highlight Robin Hood for a second. Normally in Lorcana, you have to choose between questing to gain a character's lore or using the character for something else like challenging opposing characters. But with Robin Hood, you can sort of do both. If you manage to balance, uh, dam or banish an opponent's character in a challenge, you do get that two lore anyway. But here we have a big play, I think, Brandon. <laughs> this is a huge play. A big I, play. I wanted you to finish talking. The yes. Cinderella Stouthearted being played is ginormous. Cinderella Stouthearted is both a ginormous character, uh, having resist plus two, I believe, as a 5-5, five, five, but also can challenge ready characters whenever a song is played for that turn. So Oyola being able to shift the Cinderella onto the big Cinderella means that Chris Oyola could challenge that Robin Hood this turn. Yeah, that is true. And so there's one card that Chris Corey has in his deck for this exact situation, a card that requires non-damage-based removal, and that is World's Greatest Criminal Mind. And it doesn't matter, it looks like. No, it looks like uh, Chris Croy decided to shake on it. I guess yeah. he doesn't have the answer and decides that Oyola is going to take game two. We're moving on to a game he says, three. I'll take a play. I'll go into game three. And yeah. uh, I love game threes. I, I love game too. threes, especially in the semifinals. Yes, I know. Yeah, semifinals. Yeah, semifinals. I know players may not love it because they just love to win and move on, but as casters and as viewers, I a game three is the best thing I could ask for. Yeah, we love to see it. And we know you do too. <laughs> so let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so game three, Brendan. So, uh, you know, usually we kind of ask each other, do either of these uh, players' strategies change having, you know, experienced one game or won one game each night? I don't think so. I, in my opinion, is I think they both knew what they wanted to do coming into this game, and I think both of them are trying to execute the same game plan here, um, hopefully with a better draw. Yeah, I mean, I, both... Even though both decks are not exactly the same, the game plan is relatively the same, which is just play characters and gain value out of singing your songs for free. So we talked in last game about how powerful a queen shift line into a whole new world could be, and we see Croy has that in his hand, playing the one-cost queen, having the, uh, the Floodborne queen to shift onto, and a whole new world if he wants to sing it this turn, or having access to other removal cards like Let the Storm Rage On. Oyola didn't play a character last turn, Maybe playing around the potential shift line of it being removed? Yeah, I don't know. So I, I think perhaps he's not on his ideal draw. I have to take a look and see if we have any one drops, and I don't think we do. So it's an interesting here because Chris Gray did have the whole new world uh, play available. And so one thing I want to talk about is, is I like to think of these games or these decks as having scripts. You know, each player has a script that you want to play, a story that you want to tell with your deck, a, a series of plays that you want to make. And generally, if you've played long enough in a particular meta, you know what the script of your opponent's deck is too. And so you go into a game planning to execute your script and then watching out for your opponent. And when your opponent does something that's off script, you start to wonder, perhaps there's something off here. And so not having that turn one play indicates to Chris Croy, I think, that Chris Iola didn't might not have his ideal opening hand, and so perhaps choosing to let him sit with that hand rather than draw into something better. Yes, we see Chris Oyola trying to play the Mr. Smee in response for this queen, expecting the queen to maybe, or maybe not expecting it to exert, but if it does exert, knowing that Mr. Smee can challenge and banish the queen in one turn, but Chris Croy had, and along came Zeus, that the queen was able to sing to banish this Mr. Smee, and we're already seeing just how powerful it can be to get such a strong singable 
character that you can use to sing your songs with out this early because virtually every song is opened up to Chris Croy right now to sing. Every and, song in this deck. Yeah. And, of course, there was not a one cost that Oil was able to play, but from here on out, every character that Oil is playing is subject to removal. You know, there's there's the queen there that can potentially sing another song that Oyola doesn't know if Croy has in hand or not to remove it. And on top of that, Chris Croy holding on to this whole new world, only having two or three cards in hand right now, is very incentivized to make a play next turn where we do sing whole new world with the queen, playing it for free, and then having a set fresh seven cards to play out into an even wider board. Yeah, absolutely. Not having that one drop here, just highlighting the importance of that, you know, there are two damage removal options in this deck with uh, Let the Storm Rage On, which is a card that we often see, and that Chris has available. Um, having a one drop that Chris, uh, you know, Chris was forced to remove this me, having a one drop on board on turn one means there's perhaps a character in play which could finish off the queen, but that's not available right now. And so that missing that turn one drop uh, may be the difference here in this early game. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look like Oyola has a great opening hand. We see on turn three him playing a two-cost piglet, which then is going to immediately get removed by yeah. the Let the Storm Rage On that the Ursula sings. And then we do see the queen singing A Whole New World, forcing Oyola to discard his hand and drawing seven new cards. Yeah, playing piglet a card that the last two games he was happy to ink in the early game. And now, again, just going back over the strength of songs and the mechanic in this game... Chris Corey hasn't spent any ink this turn and was able to play that uh, whole new world for free. So now Chris Corey having new cards in hand is able to play those out. We see the Baloo being played, being a bodyguard, playing it in an exerted manner, and then also playing a Robin Hood, uh, potentially threatening a shift Robin Hood on the next turn. Yeah, exactly right. Having those singers on board is crucial. And when you do the math, let's say Chris Corey has uh, four ink in the ink. Well, I think we have a singer four. We have a cost five card, a three cost Baloo. You do the math, add that up. With songs, that's how many ink, essentially, Chris has available, or inks worth of cards, whereas Chris can only do four inks worth of things. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it, because in these decks where you are utilizing songs, you don't really need to ink that much, at least if you don't have characters that you're trying to play that are very expensive. And being able to gain the value out of singing those cards uh, is ink that you're saving, basically. We do see an Aerial Spectacular Singer being played, Chris Oyola grabbing a Strength of Raging Fire from the top four cards in his deck, just trying to stick anything, trying to get anything on board, singers on board uh, that can stay around and help Oyola get back into this. Looks like we're going to ink Rapunzel, play Cinderella. Strength of Raging Fire, probably not the card Chris wanted to grab. It's a great card to deal with threats, but it relies on the number of characters on the board. And with only one there now, too, uh, it's not going to do a whole lot for him in the moment. Yeah, and Koi has a, the ability to sing, let the storm reach on, uh, banishing one of those characters, Cinderella, as well. We are going to shift the Robin Hood, though, onto the small Robin Hood. I don't think we've inked for turn. There's also a Sleepy's Flute that we could see being played. Oh, here it is. And this deck just doing all the things it wants to do. Now with the Sleepy's Flute in place, several high-cost singers. Uh, a lot of willpower to deal with, and um, it's just an uphill battle here for Chris Ayola. Yeah, this is the tough thing about this mirror match is that I, I just keep going back to the value of these songs. When you have one player that gets as far ahead as Croy does, it's very difficult for Royola to stick anything on board and it stay around just because Chris has the ability to utilize all of these removal spells, or sorry, these removal actions in Steel to banish all those characters and denying Chris Royola the same value that Chris Croy is gaining from songs because he doesn't have the characters to sing them. Yes, and if let's let's hypothetically say that Chris manages to go wide here and get several three or four characters on the board, um, again the power of singing a whole new world against playing it with several other singers on the board is you can sing whole new world and now you're drawing into a handful of removal options that then you can sing immediately to deal with all of your opponent's threats. Not only that, we talked about how Chris Oyola doesn't have any characters or cards in his deck that remove items. We already see the Sleepy's flute in play, so now Chris Oyola is on a clock to even get back into this game and as you mentioned these decks like to play a lot of songs if we do refill the hand with a whole new world regardless of who plays it there's likely songs to be played i expect this sleepy sloot to gain a lore every turn of course as the wider the board the more lore that's getting gained over the course of the game as well and i'm, I'm struggling to think of how oyola can get back into this game especially having cards like robin hood and ursula that have a lot of willpower combined with their ability to sing expensive songs 
So here we see, I think, our first golden harp. Yes, we actually see two golden harps being played. So, and we'll have to sing a song if we want those to stick around. Yes, I imagine that we're looking to sing a song with Ariel so that they aren't banished at the end of Chris's turn. This is a particularly powerful one-drop card if you can keep it from being banished. It Having one strength and four willpower and then two lore makes it a very efficient quester in the sense of you're not spending very much ink for this character and it's gaining you a lot of lore. And combined with a card like Perdita, where even if they are banished and you can't sing a song, you can immediately bring them back on turns that you can, uh, can help Oyola catch back up, at least in this lore gap. Now, what this will do is open up that Strength of Raging Fire, which we saw him keep earlier, which will now do three damage to a chosen character, allowing him to remove the blue uh, with Aerial Spectacular Singer. But of course, that leaves Aerial Spectacular Singer vulnerable to the return from Robin Hood. And so... Could also remove the Queen, which is another five-cost character. That's true. I'm sorry. Could also remove the Queen. It's, the, it's probably the, the better choice. <laughs> and then you can challenge into blue if you want to remove multiple, multiple damage or multiple questers there. Yeah, because I think we could still ink for the turn. Okay, so we can't do that anymore now, we, now that we've uh, played the Robin Hood. I, I think we're looking to... There it is. Okay, yeah, just seeing Strength of Raging Fire, banishing the queen, and passing the turn to Croy. Oyola building a bit of a board now at this mm -hmm. point. Doing what he can to stay in this game. But exactly as we suspected, Robin Hood there challenging the Spectacular Singer, uh, not only removing that character, but giving Chris two lore in the process. Robin Hood is just such a powerful card in this deck, especially when combined with a Rapunzel, being able to heal the damage that Robin Hood just took in that challenge to draw Chris two extra cards and leaving Chris with another two lore quester. It's just challenged. You know, again, if I if I were to rewind and kind of see where things, you know, started to to go sideways a little bit for Chris Ayola and put him in this defensive position, it is missing that turn one play. Um, the Strength of a Raging Fire was available from turn three onward to deal with the Queen, which just did so much work in this game. And although Chris Croy did have, was able to sing Along Came Zeus and so could have removed that one-cost card, then Smee perhaps would have stayed on the board. Mm -hmm. If Chris had managed to keep one character on the board in turn one or two to help finish off the Queen, uh, Regal Monarch, or Commanding Presence, rather, excuse me, um, along with the uh, Strength or uh, Let the Storm Rage On, then this game might play out a little bit differently because then you lose your five cost singer, et cetera. So there are some decks and there are some matches where a one drop is not important and the deck is perfectly fine to move along without it. There's some Ruby Amethyst decks that play like that. And then there's other matchups and decks where getting a presence on the board is very, very important. And when you're playing a Steel Song deck that wants to get singers to stick, that is critically important in the early game. And so missing that one turn drop perhaps is where uh, the uphill climb began. Yeah, we can see just how much Steel Song can snowball when getting an advantage and being to sing these songs. I think Croy right now on board has 19 lore just between the characters that can quest and the Sleepy's Flute. Of course, the Baloo will gain two lore as soon as it's banished as well. So I think Oyola is trying to find any line in which he can remove a fair amount of characters and try to get back in this game. But I think he only has three or four cards in hand, and it looks like he's going to give it to Chris Croy. Scoop, and Chris Croy is going to be one of our finalists for this Disney World Steel Comic Challenge. Steel Song in the finals. Who saw that coming? I was about to say, who guessed? Steel Song 